This is Lake Valley, a city I left abandoned for 2,706 days before saying Hello! and proceeding to make monumental changes throughout the city. In the previous episode, we got rid of the many monuments that were holding the city together and replaced them with regular buildings, you know, like schools, hospitals, and police stations. And in the live stream, we made a lake in a valley so that the city is no longer inappropriately named. And after these changes, the city is in a full-fledged rebound. And in today's episode, we're going to attempt to continue that progress by creating a brand new whole city transit system. This is a project that will make it possible to live in the city without a car and will improve land values throughout the region, which should help our population return to 2015 levels. And to do this, we're going to focus on transit hierarchy, starting out with inner city transportation and working our way down to first and last mile connections. And though we could blanket the entire city, including the low density areas with high capacity transit like metros, we're not going to do that because we have restraint, I think. And I'm really glad that we delayed this build because now we're going to have the opportunity to implement some of the new transit offerings like the new trolley buses and some of the new stations from the Railroads of Japan content creator pack. And if you're excited that we're finally taking on the transit build, hit the like button. And if you're not, hit the like button for that too. And for a little added fun today, leave a comment with what you think the overall transit utilization will be at the end of the episode. Or if you'd rather, drop your favorite transit emoji for the sake of engagement. And without any further ado, let's jump right in. Let's begin by talking about today's plan and then we'll have a mini stream recap. To begin, we're gonna be building our inner city transportation. And I think we're gonna build that in the heart of our IT cluster district. This is kind of our second downtown, if you will. The reason why this is such a good location is there is a passenger rail line going straight through the center and it has close freeway access, which is gonna be good for our bus. So both of these modes kind of come together right in this area. So we're gonna place it there. And that will give us an opportunity to add a metro station, which is what we'll build next, our high capacity local transit. We're gonna make a metro line that links up to our downtown and hugs one side of the mountain going to our IT cluster district. This will provide opportunities for transit oriented development, which might be how we end this series. And then we'll have another line that goes along the other side of the mountain through some of the densest parts of our community. And I was really torn on what to do here. I was initially gonna stop it right here, but after giving it some thought, I think we're gonna take this all the way to our airport. And we'll likely have two stops here. The reason is we've got our space elevator right here and then our airport. So to me, this is a major destination and we have to reach it, even if there isn't a lot in between. After that, we're gonna build a bus rapid transit line. And I wanna build this in an area that's not quite as densely populated. So we're gonna build that right through here and spin that up through this lower density area right here, hopefully opening up some opportunities to increase the density of this area. And from there, we're gonna switch gears to our first and last mile connections, and we're gonna add cable cars in our downtown area, which I think is gonna be really special linking up this terminal right here to our metro station and the terrace as well. We're gonna add in some trolley buses, which I'm really excited about. We're gonna do this in our hillier area, and we're gonna build some of our new biofuel buses. We've actually got some viable options since the new free update. Switching gears to the stream, you're gonna see a little bit of that right here. We've got this new rail line, and this links up to our airport because it was pointed out in the comments a couple episodes back that this rail terminal doesn't actually connect with the other rail terminals in the city. In fact, the way that it's set up, a plane comes in with goods, puts it in this facility, and immediately ships it out of town. And that is not what we were gearing at. So this now connects up to the rest of our cargo facilities via this new rail line, which goes underground for a large chunk of time and then pops up over here, links up with our cargo facility over here and the other facility over here. So this was a very challenging project, but a very rewarding one. And I think it's really improved the city. We also improved this interchange right here, fixing the heights and fixing some of the lane math through here because it was pretty messed up. And then finally, we hit this with a couple of meteors and created Twin Crater Lake. This puts the lake in a valley in Lake Valley, and I'm really pleased with how it came out. Not totally done yet, but that'll be something for maybe the final episode of the series as well. We did create this little beach area, and it is wildly popular. <laughs> so very, very uh, exciting place to be. This is using the same assets, same beach assets that we created for Verde Beach. So I'm very excited that these are working so well here. We will probably need some parking though. <laughs> we also created this little island here and this is for Chuckles. So if you were in the stream, you know. <laughs> Today, I wanna to focus on transit and let's begin by looking at our inner city transportation. 
I think this vantage point demonstrates why this is such a great location for these inner city facilities. We've got our highway access right here, and that connects right up into the heart of this area. We've also got two train lines meeting, and you can see them alternating different cargo rail right through this area. So we've got an opportunity to do something special here, but for all these tall buildings that are just haphazardly placed through here, disrespecting the topography. Because of that, we're gonna call a gigantic mulligan and get rid of half of this neighborhood. But I'm gonna pause it because I don't wanna lose the zoning. I want these buildings to come back. They are necessary, but I do want to fix the terrain here. And I'm gonna turn contours on. You're not gonna be able to see it just yet, but once we get rid of these buildings, you'll see why it's so important that we did this. And I hope you weren't too attached to anything here because I got rid of most of it. And here's why. You can see that this is really challenging terrain. We probably should have pre-graded this first. And I don't know that it makes a ton of sense to add the train here unless we do something about this. And the reason why is we're gonna be adding an elevated train station here. And if we place that as is, we're gonna have some issues with our heights. This is sloping, but the elevated station can't slope like that. So let's grab a height as our common height. And I think we're gonna grab a bunch of these, bring it down to this. That's quite a bit lower. It's pretty wild actually to see how big of a difference that makes. And let's just adjust a bunch of these. I'm gonna raise up the sides here because we're gonna be pushing a lot of this soil out of the way. And I'm guessing that would have been pushed towards the coast to raise up the coastline so that you're not gonna get any flooding from the river. And then we'll just feather this out a bit. And that is the general bones of this area. We should probably slope a couple of things out as well. You see that this is probably what, 10%? Oh, seven, not great. 7.7, <laughs> 7, we'll take that to four. We can do that, that is doable. Now here's gonna be an interesting spot because I want to sever these roads. This is where our train station is going to live. We're gonna grab this road and send this straight back. You can see the zoning now and it's basically 100% office with a couple of spots of some heavy commercial. And I wanna go for one of our new content creator pack train stations, and I've already been eyeballing this. So there are a couple that look like they're bypass train stations. They don't quite work in this area. The reason why is the trains end up going on the outside and looking pretty janky. What we're gonna do instead, we'll narrow this down to trains. We're gonna go for this elevated train station right here. I wanna get this as close to the edge as I can and center it on this road. So this is not a natural location for this. It shouldn't actually work, but it will because we have anarchy on. And look what this has done. We've centered on this road. We've got this pillar right on the side of the road. I think it looks really good. And because of the way this station is designed, it can terraform with the terrain and do okay with it. I really, really like this train station. The only problem that we have is we obviously have our heights incorrect. Not a big deal because we've got to move this line anyway. We have to have a bypass. So let's begin with that. We're gonna place that right about here. Use some eminent domain on that building. And then using move it, control H to this height. We can already see that's gonna be problematic. And the reason why I say that is you could see that this was sinking into the ground. So that is not gonna work for us. I'm just gonna make a, a real dirty connection right there. Another one right here. And the reason why we're doing that is we are gonna use the network multi-tool, arrange at line mode and we are going to turn basically from here into our cargo facility because this is our new main line. We don't want it going through this passenger rail facility. And it's funny, this is such a crazy height difference that it looks almost as though this isn't straight, but it is. All of that said, I wanna get the heights the same here and I'm not gonna be able to do that easily. So this is where you get to eyeball things. And that looks pretty darn good. And now we'll set our slopes. We'll slope between here and here. Just keep doing it till we get something acceptable and I'm now happy. So now I wanna take some of these pillars and move them into better locations so they're not on roads like this one was and like this one is. And then we'll do the exact same thing over here. And it looks like we've actually potentially got some height issues. Maybe not, it's hard to tell, but we'll definitely have to look at that. And now we need to bypass. So what we're gonna do is add this here and then connect right in. And we'll do the exact same thing on this side. And this is why it was so important to get our trains figured out up front as well, because our pillars rather, because now it made this very easy 
without having any conflicts here. I really like the way that looks. So we're going to run it now while I check the heights the <laughs> last couple of times, because I do want to make sure that we don't have any of these that are too low or any slopes that are too extreme. That is what we wanted to see. And now we've fixed all of the heights here. The slopes are really good. The one last place to look at is right here. I was afraid of this. This road is a bit too high. Not to worry, though. We can drop this down just a bit to make it a bit more reasonable. And then we will slope things out appropriately. And there we go. Now the heights should be pretty darn spectacular. We're clearing it. That is good. That is really, really good. So now we've got this. We just need to add in our inner city bus facility. And this is a relatively large facility. And I'm thinking maybe we try to make this feel like it's part of a complex here by having it underneath this. So I'm thinking that it might be fun to add in one of our pedestrian roads back here. And the nice thing is we can now say no zoning on this so we won't have any potential conflicts. Very good. I really, really like this. It feels super urban and that's what we were going for here. All of this said, now we need to take a look at our zoning in this area. And I think we want to get rid of the zoning along the water. It's really doing some pretty ugly stuff along the shore. If we're going to do this, I just want one row. And then I want to let this run for a moment just to make sure that we actually get some inner city trains here and we get some inner city buses. And it took a little longer than I was expecting, but here is our first train heading right out. It just spawned at the station. I wonder what this looks like in terms of passengers. One. <laughs> a high speed train with one passenger. You know, it does take a little while to get the word out. So we'll just chalk it up to that. Here's another one. 240 passengers spilling into our city. I love it. That is what we want to see. Now, before we move on to the next section, because this is a, a transit center of sorts, I do want to add in our end of line station here or our metro. And what I think we're going to go with is this ROJ Classic Metro Terminal. It is huge. So we are going to need to take that into account. And there we go. Not the most beautiful metro station to be sure. Some of these windows, I can't tell what's in there. It looks like maybe a library, but it is very modern looking in my opinion, even though it's supposed to be from the 60s. I think it fits in a modern area as well. I really, really like it. And then finally, this is probably going to be a bit controversial, but I do think that we need some sort of parking facility in this area as well. So we are going to add structured parking. And I'm going to go with one of our custom assets. The primary reason for that is that the size is just a little more manageable. The thing that's a challenge is to fit this in. We are likely going to kind of be a little a ways away from the action. I guess I'm not overly concerned about that. Folks will have to walk. It's it's uh, the way of the world sometimes. And there we go. We were a bit disrespectful of the train, so we had to clean things up. And I dig it. So we've got our parking facility right here. You got to walk a little ways, but you're going to be just fine. If you're over here, you're likely here for a longer trip anyway. And walking a couple blocks is probably not a big deal. There we go. And with that, I think that we can start to think about some of our high capacity local transit. Have you ever seen a site as sad as this one? We've got this empty metro terminal with just a a couple of people walking through it. I think they're using it as a cut through because there's no reason to be here. So let's give them a reason. Let's build out our metro system. And let's begin with our shortest of our two lines, the one that goes over the area that we just built. Now with metro, you want to have decent spacing between these or have a lot of destinations that people would want to go to. So we're going to place our first station right here. We'll have another one maybe in this general area and then another stop right over here, and then one right here. Now, this stop right here is going to be near our BRT, our future BRT, which we'll build right after. So we will uh, try to be really thoughtful about where we're placing that. For our station, I want a unified look. So we are going to use our Railroads of Japan Content Creator Pack Small Metro Terminal. And I like this one because it's approximately two by three, not very big which means that we can fit it in a variety of locations. And I really like that. And it's fairly attractive. I like it. It looks very modern. What I'm going to do is use move it to put this in a better location for us and control H it to the road. There we go. That'll be where our first station is. Let's place a few more. And I think our next one, like I said, is going to be in this general area. 
I want to see what kind of spacing this is, so we'll take a look at that momentarily. And I'm placing this off from our collector here so that basically we're spreading out the benefit of this as much as we can. So this is our most direct street. It's easy to get to this one. It should work out really well for us. Let's use measure it because I do want to have fairly significant spacing here. This is this is 3446 feet. That's over half a mile or this many meters. So that is pretty darn good. For our next station, I want this to be far enough away, but we've got this mall here. So this is right in the middle of our commercial district. And if we place it here, we're going to have to do a little bit of gymnastics to make this work. But at least we have a lot of density here, a lot of destinations, one major one right here, a bunch of offices, and then our other one will be right over here. So we've got decent spacing there as well. So let's begin building our train lines. We're going to drop this underground. Obviously, we don't want this to be above ground. And then I want to follow our roads fairly closely so we can make this as gentle as possible. There we go. Pretty smooth line here. Like the way this turned out. Let's get our first train line in and you can see by clicking into this view, you can see that we've basically followed and added stops wherever we have significant demand. And now we're connected up and we should, there we go, our first train spawning inside of our terminal. Now I'm not excited about the train that is spawning here, so let's swap this out. And I have a feeling this is gonna be a crazy busy line. Let's go right off the bat for our Metro train, 660 capacity, and if we have to, I will drop this down and I think I'm going to let this run for just a moment to see what our line ends up looking like in terms of utilization. And after just a minute or so, we've already got some good utilization, 100% car trip saved. I love it. These new trains feel like a cheat code because <laughs> you'll end up with a couple hundred people at a stop and immediately they get sucked up even if there's a bunch of people on the train already. It's the way it's supposed to be with Metro. All those people spewing in there and you know that they're going to get taken care of. It's not a problem. I love this. <laughs> so let's go on to our second route, which is going to be absolutely insane in terms of utilization. And that is going to basically connect up here. We're going to have more stops here in the downtown area anyway. And the main reason for that is because we need to, to ensure that we're hit, hitting all these destinations. The, you're gonna see hundreds of people spilling out of here during game day, other locations as well. Oh, whoa, whoa, before we do that though, I'm noticing that we have an issue here. Let's just fix that real quick. There we go. And I'm guessing that's because I updated my tree anarchy mod. Looks a lot better though, so I'm not gonna get too crazy about it. And honestly, this mod is working wonderfully and it's up to date, so very, very good. Let's start placing some of our stations and again, we're going to go back and look for our small metro terminal. And we're going to place one right next to our stadium. Now, I'm curious. I'm going to go back into this view because I do want to see, are we hitting all of our destinations? We've got one right here, one right here. There's a couple of destinations in this area. I think, again, we're going to place another station. And now we're in low density Landia. And we don't want to have too many stations so I'm going to place one right here and then I turned Anarchy off because we're going to go and do something a little challenging. We're going to try to find a home for a station in this area and you can see the game hates it. We found one home for it and it's way too close to this one. So the reason why this is such a challenging location is simply the terrain heights. We're going uphill here. I'm going to bump this one back or maybe even just wholesale eliminate that station because it's too close to this one even though the terrain makes it actually further away. We are not going to overdo it with our transit in this location. Now over here, we are going to overdo it. So I'm going to add one station right here. I turned Anarchy on and placed this right on top of here. And I want to see if there is a way that I can fit this in. And I think that might be it. If they can still walk to this, it's going to work out for us. This directionality, though, is really problematic. And I'm wondering, it do, it's not going to like what I'm doing, but maybe I can make it work. It's okay with this. Oh my goodness. That is amazing. So basically, 
I just wanted to ensure that when we make our connection up here, we can loop back around and have another one here at the airport. The airport of criminals, apparently, because that's all we have here. And then we'll have one more stop right in front of this. And in fact, let's go for one of our traditional metro stations. We'll place that right by the door. And now it's just a matter of connecting it all up. All right, we finally have our tracks laid. Let's get our new line going. We have that set up now. Let's look at our lines and I'm gonna turn the color from green to maybe red just so we can differentiate a bit. And again, this one I think is gonna need that extra capacity more than the other line. 730 passengers on our initial line already. That is awesome. We're seeing half full vehicles. We could probably take this down Maybe we'll take this down to three trains. We don't need the four. And then I'm gonna do the exact same thing we did last time. I wanna let this run for a moment just to see how things fill up. And this line looks very successful as well. In fact, we had almost 500 people at this stop right here, which is right at our space elevator, all get picked up at once because of these awesome new trains. Now I am curious, we get to a spot like this. This is where it really shines. We're not gonna pass anyone up, I don't think. Wow, we were able to pick everybody up. This is amazing. Their utilization of this route is absolutely insane. And we're not really passing people up. So I am I am into it. Wow, 392 people, that's right downtown. So folks are able to transfer back and forth between these. I love this. I do wanna have a little bit of a bus rapid transit system as well. So this isn't gonna be anything extravagant, but I do want to get that going. So I'm gonna begin with, a uh, little bit of a route drawn across the river because I know where this needs to go. So basically, we're going to take this route back here and turn this into our bus rapid transit route. This will give us the opportunity to, if we need to, to get back to our original starting population, increase the density along this corridor. I also want to send this up and over the highway. Then we'll use our create curve mode to link this to this. And this will be where our BRT curves on over. So we're going to reach residential, some industrial, and then some commercial. It's really kind of the trifecta of everything you could hope a bus route to be. And now we want to take this same concept and add dedicated bus facilities to this road. So the other thing that would go along with this would be signal priority. I am also inadvertently, but maybe now purposefully removing zoning along this road. I think I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want things focused on this road. This is 100% dedicated to this bus. So that is one of the nice things that we can do with toggle zoning. So we're gonna say that that accident is actually a good one because it is allowing us to change the building in a way that I think is gonna be helpful for us here. And then I want some way to loop back around through here. I think we will once again add this facility right here, this time with zoning. And then right here, we're gonna add some dedicated bus lanes. And ideally, I think we wouldn't be taking this down, uh, necking down the number of lanes, but it, that is what we're doing. It's going to be completely fine. All I want to make sure that we're doing then is not having extra lanes here. So I am going to steal this facility. So this will be where this goes. This will be the turnaround right here. Maybe it doesn't need to have dedicated lanes, but it doesn't hurt. Certainly, it's always nice to have the dedicated lanes because that gives you the ability to have tighter times. So you could have a slightly longer route if you wanted. Not a bad thing at all. Right here, we're going to send this up again this way. And then the goal is to create a bridge across here in this low density area. It's kind of a weird little spot in this neighborhood of low density. This is where we are going to add our new routes. Wow. We've got some terrain challenges there as well. We will address and adjust. And now we're going to take this and bridge this. Obviously, we can't block the river off. And I want this to be bus only. I don't want cars coming across here. And then lastly, we need our turn around over here. And this is a local street. All these are local streets. I'm not going to get overly concerned about it. It's not like that big arterial that we had over there. I am going to fix that because that's crazy. And it still looks pretty wild, but that is considerably better. Let's get this bus route on here. But before we do that, actually, let's contemplate our, the type of bus that we're using. 
So we have a bus depot over here. This is for regular old buses. And I think we're going to leave this. We can have some regular buses in a couple of spots, but I do want actually no, no. We're going to get rid of this and we'll place a biofuel bus depot. This plainly is an inappropriate location anyway. So let's just get rid of it. Wow. More hot stuff. <laughs> oh, and there's just an unlimited number of things. I see this bump here now. I'm going to step away. I'm going to step away before I go crazy. Either way, we've got the zoning fixed over here. So what we're going to do is place this over in this general area. This is actually a great location because they have easy access to this route. So we'll go for our biofuel bus depot. Place that right here. And now we can place a route. Now for bus rapid transit, we want to have wider spacing again, just like we had on our on our metro lines. We're going to treat it very similarly. We don't want these stops to be every single block. So for this, we'll have it on either side of the bridge and then I'm going to go multiple blocks. And then mirror this right away. So this is very significant spacing in comparison to what we've done with other bus routes. But to me, this is how you do it. There we go. Line completed. I do want to upgrade. We went a little bit further down than I anticipated. So we'll upgrade that to be part of our bus network. There we go. Let's get this bus adjusted and we're going to swap this over to a articulated biofuel bus 75 capacity, much more reasonable. And I like this because now you should be able to load right from here. And these are our new articulated biofuel buses. Wow, they look very nice. I like that. To me, this is a very good solution for this area. I dig it. And we'll let this go while we start to focus on some of our first and last mile connections. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I am really excited about what we're about to do. I cannot wait to place these cable cars. I think it's going to add a whole bunch of activity to this area. So we'll go with our cable car stop in this location. And the reason we're going with this one is I want to have two separate stops and I'm going to grab this with move it and kind of rotate it where I think it needs to be. Control H it to the end of the road and see how bad this looks. Not so bad. Not so bad at all. So now I want to make sure that anarchy is off, which might sound a little surprising. But the primary reason for that is I don't want this to not work. And, th and that's the thing. Anarchy will let you do things, but with cable cars, they'll stop working. So <laughs> we're going to we're going to do this the natural way. We've also turned all of our snap twos off, which gives us the flexibility to, to place this really wherever we want to. And before we go any further, let's place our end of the line cable car stops. I want to place one right about here. And that is the height of realism. Just carve into the side of the mountain to make this work. The other one, we're going to place it in this general location. I basically want folks to be able to get from the bus directly up there if they want to, or maybe not from the bus. We'll, we'll, have, we'll add the bus from there, uh, from the harbor. I'm going to turn angle on for the time being and see if I can work with this. And look at that invalid shape. So that is what we're going to need to really contend with. And we got it to work. So that is how we got around invalid shape kind of bows out. I have a feeling this one is going to be very similar. OK, for this one, we're going to need to do a little bit more work. Where we're going to start out is basically trying to make this cliff look a bit more reasonable. I think that it's not just about the look. It's about the functionality of this particular station that should do the trick for us. Now we need to figure out a way to make this connection work. To do that, we're going to likely have to go up the hillside sideways and then angle this thing back in. There we go. So the trick with these, if they're going to be really steep like this, is lots and lots of pillars very, very close together. <laughs> so I am very curious about how this is going to work. I did add this a unit over as well because I wanted to extend our pedestrian connection over to this location. And now if we really wanted to, we could try our best to fix the hillside a little bit here. There we go. I like it. I like it. Now, maybe all these people that have been struggling going uphill, walking all the way around here are going to be able to find a different route. So to to see this, I'm going to let this run for just a moment and we'll be right back. 
And you know, it's funny. People just seem to love walking here. <laughs> and it's not that I'm against walking. I just think that this is kind of a an unusual route to take. So I want to look at the traffic routes and see where people are coming from. It looks like people are coming from the terrace and this. And oh, they're walking through the building. I hate that. And then they're going to the metro. So I'm not sure why they are doing that. 110 people here, 312 there, and 202 here. So maybe it's just a routing thing. Things do take a while. In the meantime, let's pop over to our hillside neighborhood where we are going to start to focus on some of our trolley buses. So we've got to start out with a trolley bus depot. And these things are large. I think we need to try to find a location that's fairly flat, like these areas down here, and use a bit of eminent domain. Now, we do have a lot of bike facilities on here, and I do want to be cognizant of that and actually run this down the bike facilities so that you could take this and, and choose your method of alternative transportation. All right, so we've reached the end of our bike facility here, and now we're at our circle. So now we need to figure out where we're going to get over here. And I think this we're just going to turn right here. We'll send up this way. The only thing that's, that's giving me pause is we've got all this density right here. So let's call a mulligan. And I know that this is like a roundabout thing. <laughs> we are going to make it bi-directional. And let's spread some of the benefit to this high density portion of this and try to overlook the craziness of the heights and the terrain. And I'm just going to add a path through there so that you'd be able to get to the buses if you were in the, de the densest area of this neighborhood. We also need to fix the rest of this. Wow, this is terrible. It's a cul-de-sac with a cul-de-sac with a cul-de-sac. Oh, I don't know what it's doing. Now for this, I want to again get to this bike facility and I do not want to create issues here because we this is our main collector through the area. It would be a great place to have the, this this uh, uh, transit facility, but being parallel is also very good. And that's the route that we're going to take with this. And now we can basically go over here and do what we want. So we're going to circle around this area. And we could leave it here alternatively. And what I think we're probably going to do is send another route down here and come back around. And then we'll have really good coverage through this entire neighborhood. So now no matter where you are, you should have access to a trolley bus, at least in this neighborhood. We also need to get to the other side. Now this is going to be maybe a bit more of a trick. So we have this, this collector through here. It's probably overbuilt. So I think we're going to take this through and I'm really hoping that this has a tunnel. It does. Thank goodness. And then we'll send this over here as well. Now this one, we have a little bit more free reign to do what we want. Obviously this was a collector. We've taken it down a notch. I'm okay with that. We're just gonna have a little loop through here. Nothing all that extravagant. I think we'll go all the way down here, get over as far as we can, and then loop right back to where we were coming from before. So this is one of the limitations of trolley buses. You've really got to create a bunch of circulator routes. It kind of limits what you're able to do in terms of your routes, but it will do the trick for us. So let's get some of these going. And basically we're gonna start our route right about here. This segment is strictly to get buses to the roads where we can actually have bi-directional service. Because this is a local route, we're gonna have stops, we'll say every three blocks or so, maybe four. There we go. So this is a complete route. We're going to mirror this and then we'll be right back. And there we are. The opposing route is now completed. And that's a good rule that you should kind of abide by with bus routes. Unless you're creating a kind of a shorter circulator route, you should probably have bi-directional service so people can get to where they need to go in either direction. Now we've got to complete that route over here. And this is going to be more of a circulator route. So we won't have bi-directional service. And we're going to finish this route right here, but we need to find some sort of interface over here. And this is where it gets, it's going to get interesting because we may need to create some sort of loop over here. And I think that's exactly what we're going to do. So I'm going to add a stop right here and another one right here, and then we'll finish this. But then I want to add in a cross connection right here. 
So we're just upgrading this for the benefit of that route. So extra trolley wires, but now we're saving quite a bit in terms of uh, deadhead right there. And you can see this will eventually fix our route. Now our route is considerably shorter. So I dig it. That works really well for us. Now we want to take a look at our vehicles. This is we're basically done with local service in this particular area. We are going to use normal biofuel buses over here. So let's take a look at these and see how we've done. When we look at this, we can see that we've got a couple of stops with some pretty extreme passenger numbers. So 271. What I like to do here is add up all the passengers that we have and then all the capacity that we'd have in the vehicles. I know that the 30 capacity vehicle isn't going to cut it. And even if it would, I don't want to use it. So we are going to go for our 90 capacity. Yeah, actually, I really love the way these 50 capacity look. We're going to go for 90. And now we can take this and just do some multiplication. So here, if we have 90 capacity per vehicle and we multiply that by nine vehicles, we can carry on any given route 810 passengers. So I'm going to go through and add this number up to see how many passengers we have. And it looks like 900 is what we need to hit. So we are actually very close to that. Adding one vehicle would be equilibrium. But we know if, if anything that we should know, it's that equilibrium is not good enough on a bus route. It needs to appear that you can get on the bus. So we are going to give it an extra maybe two vehicles. So if 10 vehicles is equilibrium, this is perfection. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the other routes and we'll be right back. All right. And I've adjusted the routes. The first two routes that are going around this large loop both needed 12 vehicles. Our third line, though, I was able to go with fewer vehicles. So I went with this lovely 50 capacity trolley bus that I was so excited about. And we dropped this down to 65% of, uh, of, of the budget for this route so that we only have six vehicles out there, which still should provide us excess capacity. And then finally, I want to add some local bus routes. So these will be connections from here into our neighborhood. Since we don't really have excellent subway service all throughout here, we're going to add a couple of stops. So things like creating a line here, and then maybe swinging through some of these other areas that are a little more difficult to serve. I don't know who would be going from the industrial area to the airport, but you know, there is something that, that could be said for that. Perhaps there is a boss at this in, in this industrial area that needs to be able to get to a flight. So we're providing that access. And then we'll just have a quick route through here to turn around and again, mirror your stops. Now, interestingly, I've created some sort of issue here by modifying this. So let me show you. I had to create a stop here simply to get this to work. I couldn't connect the lines. So I went to add this right here and look what it does. It just like scoots down. Never seen that before. All right. So I upgraded the street and that did not fix it. Now, this wouldn't necessarily be the end of the world, but I'm concerned that we're not actually going to get people into this facility and that this building is just fundamentally broken. So I'm just going to delete this whole thing. Oh, look at that. That seems off. <laughs> so maybe this is part of the issue. Nothing to see here. You didn't see that and I didn't see that. So let's just fix this. There we go. New facility and it's working just fine. So apparently the problem was we had uh, some disconnect between this facility and its path. In. So all's well that ends well, I suppose. And we can remove that. Now people can enter directly in here. As far as other routes that are going to the airport, I think we're going to have one that interfaces somewhere with our trolley bus route, but nothing all that extravagant. Again, these are circulators to get people into the airport and really nothing else. So I think we'll just send this up this way and loop back around. And there we go. Purpose built routes simply to get people to the airport, the ability to transfer between modes. Now I'm going to add one local bus route up here. We're going to basically go up and down this arterial. I think it's all that we need, if I'm being completely honest with you. And that is because we've already got excellent metro service. This route is also going to cross through here and provide a movement that we don't have anywhere else. So let's begin right about here. And then we're going to basically do the exact opposite of what our high capacity transit does. So as this starts getting further with its stop spacing, we will start getting closer to provide those cover that coverage where we have gaps. 
Then we provided this interface here with our trolley bus. And now let's mirror this back around. And then we'll send this over here. And this will just be kind of a shortcut that folks could take to get across here if they wanted to. There we go. Okay, so I've adjusted the other routes and taken them down to about five buses with the new Japanese buses. And in this area, we are gonna blanket it with service and try to make this super predictable and basically try to cover every single street or every, we want every everyone to be within walking distance of a bus route. Now for this particular route, I wanted to do a little bit of double duty. So we're picking people up and potentially dropping them off at their places of employment. Here's the thing, we don't have stops in some of these places because we have highways everywhere. So we're gonna need to convert some of these highways over to just normal roads. And now we can add a stop right there. We'll do the exact same thing over here by our forestry industry. And I added the median to make it easier for someone to cross. The traffic could be fairly thick and heavy through here and sometimes going faster than they should. So having this median refuge would be very valuable to any pedestrians in the area. All right, I think that that is a pretty good blanket of coverage. I will admit that as I got closer to the end, I started making routes that I don't like. And the reason for this is a concept known as coverage. Oftentimes you need a route to provide coverage. This could be for the paratransit service area, paratransit being accessible uh, transit that it takes someone from the door, their door to wherever they're going, the door to wherever they're going, sometimes door through door. So they will actually assist in picking someone up in their home and taking them to their destination. To have access to that service, you have to be within a certain uh, mileage, and I think, believe it's three quarters of a mile to a fixed route bus route. So my head started going there and I started providing all of these routes that I don't love, but provide coverage within that three quarters of a mile. So here we are with our bus routes. You could basically get anywhere in the community on a bus, but we do need to adjust these. So I'm gonna go through and we've got all of these routes now. We've got, looks like nine of them and I will upgrade the buses. I want them to at least be this 74 capacity commuter bus. I'm good with that. We can also go for some of the more, uh, some of the, the biofuel buses. I'm good with that as well. And in fact, maybe that's the route I'll go for a couple of these. We'll, we'll take these up to some of our articulated buses, some of them that have higher utilization and the other ones we will have is the Japanese. So I'm gonna upgrade all of these and adjust the routes and we'll be right back. All right, now a whole bunch of these bus routes are way over capacity even with our new Japanese commuter buses. But here's the thing, we've got this super bendy bus with a capacity of 100. And I like this vehicle because it's easy to estimate the number of buses that we would need. Obviously, if it's 234, we would need 2.34 buses to cover this particular stop. So I can add this up fairly quickly and see that these two stops are five. We'll, get, we'll call this six, seven, eight buses nine buses, 10, 11, 12 buses will cover this route if we have this. And then we go a little bit beyond that. And we also know that there were people in the other buses. So I think we're gonna need 15 or 16 buses to cover this route in its entirety. So this is what I've done with every single one of the routes. And I just realized one quick thing. We never added a bus route here at our terminal in the downtown, huge oversight. So I've added a quick route here. It basically loops around this high density area. Just the circulator route stops at the courthouse and the university goes through downtown and then stops here. And with that, what I think we need to do is let this run for a little while. And while that's happening, we will take inventory of what we've done and have a brief city tour.
after letting this run for a while, we finally have our final numbers and we have over 7,000 total trips per week. There are some interesting things in these numbers though that I want to point out to you. For instance, we've got most of our tourists deciding to take the Metro while most of our residents are hopping on the bus. Not very many tourists on there. Thought that was kind of interesting. Some of the other things that I found that were really interesting, this right here, 444 trips per week, right here, 242, 314 right there. Lots of people taking advantage of the cable cars and why not? What a fun way to get around. The thing that's so special about this location for the cable cars is it provides direct access right here to our Metro. In fact, we could have improved this a bit more. Now we can walk directly from this station right here to this pedestrian path to get over here. Probably a very valuable connection to make. Another thing I wanted to point out in the same area, this 3,900 people use this in the last week. It's wild. I also wanted to talk a bit about our bus routes and in particular this teal route right here. This is a coverage route that I did not want to create. Yet, I created it and it is the number one route in the system. It's crossing a number of other routes and I think that what's happening is people need to transfer onto this route to reach their final destinations or their homes. So it is a reason why coverage routes are important even if I hate them. We, uh, the other routes that are very successful, they're kind of all over the board. Uh, but for the most part, I've gone through, looked at every route individually and I'm trying to make sure that there's not too much passing up. There are routes like this one though, where you are gonna be passed up once or twice. We got capacity behind it. It's still shaking out and it, you could kind of continue to adjust these back and forth, basically if forever, if you wanted to. And then we've got our two Metro lines. So Metro line two is the longer of the two lines. This is the line that goes out to the airport. And obviously this is the one doing most of the heavy lifting. It does appear that there's a whole bunch of people getting passed up right here. That is our terminal. So as this right here comes over here, it's going to completely empty out and everyone waiting here will end up getting on this. So there is no passing up on this. I did have to add extra capacity to get to the state though, because there were issues uh, near the end of the route where there'd be a spot with 200 passengers constantly getting passed up. The other Metro line. Ooh, look at this. We do have a little bit of drama here. And that again is at the end of the line. So we are in a completely fine spot there. I did have to go through and modify the trolley buses, in particular, trolley bus route three. This is the one where I put the 50 capacity buses over on the on the smaller side of this mountain. This had a whole bunch of passing up. So I've increased this to 165% capacity. At one point we had five vehicles at 50 each and it just wasn't enough. And now it looks like we have way too much capacity, but you know what? I'm gonna be okay with there being too many buses out there. So there we go, over 7,000 people per week using our transit system. But I think this is where we leave it today, and I really hope that you've enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you are not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. And let me know in the comments, how close did you get on the transit utilization? Did you guess around 7,000, or were you thinking way higher or way less? Once again, thank you so much for joining me. There's a million things you could be doing. You decided to hang out with me, and I appreciate that. I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, and I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.